as we have one minute to go for the uh, official presentation today, I wanted to say how excited I am to be part of this webinar. So we wanted to make sure that we say welcome to our webinar from theory to action. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good night, it depends where you are joining us from today. We wanted to give you a big welcome to our webinar from theory to action. First, if this is your first webinar online and we wanted to say thank you and we wanted to congratulate you because you took the time and the courage to do something new. Um, and if you are an, an expert and you um, have been participating in a lot of online webinars, we also wanted to say thank you to you. And we hope that we bring you a nice experience. And we wanted to thank you for your time because in this times that we all are in our homes, it's just difficult sometimes to find a good content and good information. So we are honored that you uh, decide to take this uh, online webinar today from Theory to Action. And we are very, very excited to be here with you. So let me just give you a little quick tip about our webinar. If you can see in your section on your computer, on the right side, you have a chat section. In this chat section, you will be able to um, say something to or comment or have a question. That is me. I just say hola in Spanish. I say hello to everybody. And uh, I wanted to make sure that we are uh, communicating constantly. So let me just tell you. Uh, another tip is as we are going to be in and out with the presenters, uh, you will have the chance to look at our very nice a uh, presentation and you also have the chance to listen to very good tips that we will be giving you um, as we go along. So my name is Claudia Trani Melgar. I, uh, I was born and raised in Bolivia in South America. And I'm currently living in United States, in New Jersey, in the state of New Jersey. I'm very happy. I'm a resident of the United States. I have a master in communications. I also a journalist. And I am excited to be here. I'm also a Spanish teacher. And I will be the moderator today for this webinar. I'm excited to be here. This is a very hard work for all the girls that have been putting it together. And I wanted to share with you some of the um, knowledge and professional uh, tools that we have in this opportunity. So let's start talking about the two organizations that are making this webinar possible. So I'm going to um, introduce, before I do that, I introduce my uh, family. I'm a mother of two, as you can see, Luciano and Gianna, uh, in, uh, that's our pet, Madison. I am also member, I have been member and volunteer in different kind of organizations throughout my life. Uh, one of them is a Bolivian Foundation for Social Development. I am excited to be a part of the Bolivian Foundation that has a um, office in Bolivia and also office in the United States. We partner with Fundesoft. They definitely work with uh, minority and population in danger in Bolivia. I am a member and an ambassador of GSL Network and also a member of More Latin America. As we are going to do the presentations, as I mentioned, we're going to have two incredible presenters with two different um, kind of presentations. The first one is going to be Aletia Olmedo uh, Perlasca. She will bring us the presentation, Clarifying Your Goals. And Paula Berplanque, she is uh, from Salvador, and she will be bringing us the presentation, Relief Stress During Difficult Times. As I mentioned, uh, this it's possible through two different organizations. The first one is the GSL Network. GSL Network is a growing network of professional young leaders around the world with a common goal of changing the way the world works. They're doing that by mentoring, empowering, networking, and supporting initiatives that promotes leadership, 
understanding, respect for other cultures, and communication in a global world. GSL founder Michaela Walsh uh, designed a leadership program for young women in the year 2000. And this started at Manhattanville College. During this year, since 2000, over 200 students from emerging countries around the world have participated in the GSL program. Since then, the program has been replicated in many universities around the world, including Africa, Latin America, the US, and men and women have participated. Throughout these 20 years, GSL has been and had the support of many different organizations and universities. Just to show you a few of them over here, but we have been very um, happy and blessed to be able to have the support of so many uh, important uh, institutions around the world. In 2017, again, our founder, Michaela Walsh, had the wonderful initiative to reunite many uh, alumni, many generations of GSLs. And she brought us together at Manhattanville College one more time to reunite us. And after many years that since we participate in the program, we, she wanted to find out what happened to this leadership to, to these young girls, they had been part of this leadership program. What happened with their lives? So she brought us together and a wonderful and extraordinary thing happened. This group of young leaders have gathered together during this week and created a GSL network. GSL network is the result of this group of impressive professional women around the world, they gathered that day and that week, thanks to the founder, Michaela Walsh, and to this wonder initiative that started in 2000. So the GSL network is in charge of promoting programs, seminars, conferences, and workshops, teaching effective leadership programs and solving skill problems, but most importantly, promoting empathy, promoting respect of other cultures, and especially to um, shape the new leaders of this generation. So in today's seminar, we are um, trying to share our personal knowledge from our professional and practical experiences to inspire you who are in the audience today and listening from different parts of the world. So we wanted to make sure that we share this knowledge and these practical experiences by bringing you this kind of uh, webinar that you can have access from the comfort of your home. So let me just tell you a little bit more about how do we or how you can reach us to GSL Network. We're trying to empower the new generation. And you can contact us through our info, gslnetwork.com, or you can go to online and find our website, gslnetwork.com. So we are promoting and we also have the vision to make this world a better place for everybody. And before I continue, I wanted to introduce you to our mentor, our founder, and the person that made this GSL program a success around the world. Her name, as I mentioned before, Michaela Walsh. As I've been saying, the reunion in 2017 brought us together again. And one more time, she was right about her leadership skills that, he, that she put into all of us back in 2000. Michaela Walsh is an activist. She's a scholar. She's a mentor. She's an educator. She's an author. She was a pioneer woman, and she had managed different organizations. She is the founding president of Women's World Banking, 
as well as the founder of GSL program. We would like to share with you a video and when you will have the chance to meet her and hear from her own voice about how she created this program and what was the motivation for her. So stay with me and we will share a short video with you. City uh, was one of the founders of this global student leadership network of young women leaders from around the world. Professor Stellick here, Susan Stellick at NYU Stern, I'm teaching the management communication program. But back in 2001, I worked with Michaela Walsh developing the global student leadership program. What we have tried to do is make a breakthrough in understanding how it is now time for women to take their seat at the table as leaders and creating some new opportunities for the women's leadership and for development in the world to create a more peaceful and, um, and uh, secure world for all families, all women, and all children coming behind us. What's so wonderful today is that I can see these young women and say, I am so proud to be a part of everything they're doing. GSL Network. It's a network of strong young men from different backgrounds as we come from different countries, different cultures. Hello, I am Margarita Prada and I'm from Colombia. Hello everyone, my name is Erica. I am from Brazil. Hi, I'm Georgina Monteiro. I'm originally from uh, Dominican Republic. I'm Ella Betts and I was born in Poland. I'm Isabella Muñoz from Colombia. And as you can see in our video of uh, GSL reunion, we um, gathered together from many different countries, many different backgrounds, many different languages, and we had created the GSL network. So we are very excited to be here today and to be able to share this extraordinary experience about our leadership program as a GSL. Remember to contact us through our website or our info e email. So thank you for that. And we're going to continue to say thank you to More Latin America, the other international organization that is making possible for us to be here today. Uh, More Latin America is a, a platform to exchange personal experiences and knowledge. Uh, MORE is, stands for Mindfulness, Mindfulness, Opportunity, Resiliency, and Equality. MORE is a project that promotes empowerment of women through free online training. This platform is currently online. So if you want to uh, follow us, you speak Spanish, or you know somebody that speaks Spanish that would like to follow us, we welcome you on our different platforms. And as I mentioned, we're getting ready to put our two presenters. Uh, let me just share with you uh, two uh, tips about what are the requirements. We will give you a certificate of participation. Uh, two reminders. We, uh, for you to get the certificate of participation, uh, we ask you to stay with us for each of the presentations, at least 25 minutes each. Uh, at the end, we will share with you a little survey and we would like you to fill the survey at the end of the two presentations. Uh, this helps us to know your opinions, your comments, and also to get a feedback and how are we doing or how do we do with the webinar. And also you will need to confirm uh, your name and your last name and how you would like uh, to be 
in your certificate of participation. Uh, we will definitely email you a certificate of participation within six, uh, seven business days. So uh, as we're getting ready to give uh, Aletia our first presenter today, let me just make sure that I have all the connections here and bear with us. We will switch to her presentation. And again, we thank you and we welcome you from wherever you are um, joining us. If a, you are just joining us now, today we are doing a webinar that is from theory to action. My name is Claudia Traninaga. So here is our first presenter, Aletia Olmedo. She is a master in counseling and psychology. She is from Mexico. She's a psychotherapist at hypnotherapist, and she is a mental coach. She works at Mind in Motion in Las Vegas, Nevada, and she's also a member of More Latin America. She will be presenting to us, clarifying your goals. We will learn from her presentations how to identify your personal goals and align those with your values, your personal values. Also, we will learn how to set up personal strategies to follow your goals. And the um, other goal will be, um, sorry, you will also learn um, what kind of questions you have to ask about yourself in order to get to those, your goals. So let me just give Aletia from Mexico a big applause, virtual, virtual applause, as she is going to join us into her presentation. One more time, thank you for staying with us in this webinar today. I am going to make sure that, present, that Aletia is ready and she's going to be the presenter and I'm going to see you in a little bit. All right, Aletia, all yours. Here you go. Your presentation is starting in this minute. I'm having a little bit of difficult connecting to Aletia. Let me just uh, make sure that her connection is working and I'm going to give her the presenter and make sure that she is ready for us. So we wanted to thank you for the patient. As you know, in this time of um, a lot of use of internet and everybody being home, sometimes we have a little bit of technical difficulties and the connection maybe is not as strong as we want it to be. So let me just say that I make sure that I have Aletia ready for her presentation one more time. And I wanted to make sure that she is ready for us. I hope she's coming soon. Oh my, we definitely were not prepared for this kind of connection. And uh, 
can see the aletia is um, we are having a little bit of difficult trying to make it the presenter. Uh, just bear with us. As I mentioned before, we are doing this from different parts of the world. Um, we are in different parts uh, and we're trying to connect uh, each other. So I have Aletia, uh, as I mentioned before, if you just join us, she is from Mexico. She is a psychotherapist, a hypnotherapist, a mental coach, and she is joining us from uh, Vegas, Nevada. And she is also a member of uh, more Latin America. So Aletia, let me know if you are ready as I am trying to make sure that you are with all the rights to be the presenter. And I am. I can see that you are here. So let me just make sure if your connection probably is not working the best. What do you think so far about the presentation as we wait and we make sure that we have Aletia uh, ready for the presentation? We will have a second presenter today and hopefully what you have seen today about our DSL network and our more Latin America is something that it's something new for you and you're trying to, um, you know, get ready for the two uh, wonderful presenters that we prepare for you. So uh, let's see if um, maybe Aletia will put it for the second part. Let me just make sure that I have Paula and I will try to see if I can uh, switch it with Paula. All right. Again, we apologize for the inconvenience of the connections. Let me just make sure that I have Paula uh, ready and she said she is. So I'm going to make sure that she is right here. And I'm going to invite Paula to be the presenter. And she's coming on. As I wait for Paula to be the presenter, I'm going to prepare her presentation. Paula, could you hear me? I can. <laughs> All right. Um, well, we going to do what everybody does when we having some internet connection. And it seems to me that you sometimes or we sometimes plan something and it doesn't go the best way. But here, we are here together and we will be able to make sure that everything goes as we are. So let me just present Paula the proper way. Uh, Paula is originally from El Salvador. She is also a master's in Spanish and literature. And uh, she works at a career and technical high school and also at Matsu College. She's a Spanish teacher there. And she is a yoga instructor. She's a member of uh, More Latin America. And her presentation today is about relieve stress during difficult times. I'm so excited about her presentation. Both of them <laughs> are wonderful. Uh, what are we will learn from her today. We will learn about what is mindfulness. Uh, we will learn uh, how different kinds of stress relieve the stress and the importance of, of a sleep and nutrition. Uh, she will also give us a quick guide to meditation. So let's say hi to Paula, say bye to me, and we <laughs> will have um, Aletia coming back after Paula. All right. Well, hi, good afternoon. I'm Paula Verplanke. I am originally from El Salvador. I currently live in Wasilla, Alaska. I am also a Spanish teacher, a career in technical high school in Matsu College. And for the past five years, I have been practicing yoga and teaching yoga and, and I absolutely love it. So today I am gonna talk to you about how to relieve stress during difficult situations. And so my goals are to talk about mindfulness. What is mindfulness? How to relieve stress? Uh, I will give you some stretches that you can do at home. And I am also gonna be talking about the importance of sleep and nutrition. And to end uh, my short talk, I will guide you through a body scanning meditation. So let's begin. If you would have asked me five years ago, what is mindfulness? I don't think I would have been able to answer that question. 
But today, I will describe mindfulness to you as I see it. Mindfulness to me is being in the moment, not thinking about what happened yesterday, what happened in the past, or planning for the future. Mindfulness to me is thinking about the present moment, focusing. So I chose a picture of some fruits. So many of us nowadays with our jobs or our hectic life, we don't really take the time to enjoy our food. Personally, I know that when I'm at work, I, I'm embarrassed to say it, but sometimes I inhale my food. I eat so fast, I don't really enjoy it. So think of this plate of food that I have presented for you. If you were to take a bite out of one fruit, can you imagine what it would taste like? Can you imagine the flavor and the texture? Is it juicy or dry? So mindfulness would be to be in the moment, enjoying your food, taking away the distractions, your cell phone, your book, the TV, just enjoying the moment. And maybe you're thinking, oh, whatever, Paula, I don't want to do that. Well, how about doing the dishes? All of us do the dishes. What would it be like, imagine while you're doing the dishes, what would the soapy water feel running through your fingers? What would the running water feel like? Are you washing plastic or glass? Is there a difference? And if not, you can always think of this. Imagine you are climbing a rock or a mountain, right? And you're afraid you're going to fall off. So if you were climbing this rock, you are probably thinking, where, is my, where am I going to place my foot in this moment? Where is my hand going to go? Most likely, you are not thinking about what color socks you're wearing or whether or not you're going to chip your nail polish. You are in the moment. You are enjoying the moment. So I would like to encourage you to take five minutes to yourself to just release, decompress, and be in the moment. Again, setting an intention, being patient with yourself, being present in the moment. Next, now that we have uh, talked about our mind releasing that area, let's talk about our physical self, stretching. So I would love to encourage everyone to practice yoga, but maybe you are not inclined to do so. It's okay. How about some stretches? So I'm going to be talking about five areas of our bodies that tend to hold a lot of stress. The first one will be your neck. So what can you do? Well, let's, how about lengthening the muscles? How about some movement? Moving your head from side to side, stretching. Many of us are not getting the sleep that we need, the necessary rest, so we wake up with aches on our neck, right? So the only thing I will encourage you to do anytime that you do a neck stretch, you want to make sure that you never push hard. You always want to gently press. So I'm giving you a couple of stretches here, but I encourage you to look on YouTube or to search for any stretch that will feel good to you. The next area that tends to hold a lot of stress are the shoulders. And I see this even within myself. Many times when we are worried, we bring our shoulders up, right? So how about releasing our shoulders, bringing them down and stretching? So again, two very simple uh, shoulder stretches that you can practice at home if you are interested. The next section that I want to talk to you about is your spine. It is extremely important to keep your spine moving. So twisting uh, poses help. And again, I recommend the seated cow pose that really helps improve uh, your posture, and it releases tension. Next, hip flexors. So if we sit a lot, we're sitting watching TV or if we sit in front of the computer, 
we need to counterbalance that movement. And hip stretchers are really an area that everybody should be stretching to prevent lower back pain. And the next stretch that I would like to talk to you about is your hamstrings. So here we go. So just making sure that you stretch that back area, right, right behind the knee, that whole area, that whole muscle that goes to your buttocks, just making sure that you're constantly stretching that. A good friend told me once that if you have tight hip flexors and tight hamstrings, you will have lower back pain. So stretching those areas is extremely important. And remember, you don't have to set aside 30 minutes or an hour to do the stretches. Five minutes a day. So how about in the morning, maybe you do your neck stretches. Mid-morning, you do your shoulders. Afternoon, maybe your spine. And in the evening, you take care of your hip flexors and your hamstrings, just a little bit at a time. The next area we'll talk about is the importance of sleep. So I chose a picture that I'm sure you would like. So it's a kitten taking a nap. You know, I have some friends that function on very little sleep, four to six hours. And all of us have heard, it is recommended that we sleep at least eight, right? Eight to 10. If we don't sleep, what happens? Weight gain, stress, heart disease. So even during these times of stress, I would like to encourage you to make sure that you are resting, to make sure that you take that little cat nap in the afternoon. Remember, this is how our bodies recover. This is how everything, how we release tension and we fight illnesses. How about nutrition? Well, I am not a nutritionist, but I can tell you that everything in moderation is good. Can I tell you I don't eat donuts? Eh, no, I actually enjoy donuts. But remember, don't eat four or six. If you eat one, that's fine. It's perfect. You're supposed to enjoy life, right? So eat a balanced diet. And if you're going to have sugars and carbohydrates, just remember everything in moderation. So now I have talked to you about mindfulness, stretching, sleeping, in nutrition. And now I would like to guide everyone through a short body scanning meditation. So I invite everyone to close their eyes. And this is not going to take very long. I would like you to close your eyes. And of course, we are not going to concentrate on distractions right now. And I would like you to think, I would like you to bring awareness to your toes. So take a deep breath and bring awareness to your big toe. And now bring awareness to your little toe. Bring awareness to the arch of your foot and your ankle. And slowly bring breath to your calf. And notice your calf. If there is any tension on your knees, breathe deeply and release. Notice your thighs and your hips. Now come to your abdominal muscles and notice how they expand and contract as you breathe. Bring attention to your chest, your spine, and if your shoulders are tight, I invite you to release them, bring them down. Take a deep breath and notice your neck, the back of your head. Maybe notice your eyebrows, your eyes. And now very gently, you can open your eyes. And that's a quick body scanning meditation. So this took not very long, but remember, you can meditate while you exercise, you can bring while you breathe, noticing your breathing, bringing awareness to your body. 
and basically I just want to go over the tips again to reduce the stress in your life five minutes a day we're all busy we all have families we all have laundry we all have to do dishes take just five minutes to yourself remember that can help you reduce anxiety stretch part of your five minutes sleep and eat nutritious foods and i truly do hope that you are well and healthy and take good care and do you have any questions that's the end of my presentation paula see sí. thank you so much for that presentation um oh, thank you I feel relaxed with that five minutes <laughs> relaxation and meditation that we did. Uh, thank you for bringing us that much uh, information. And we do have some questions uh, from okay. our audience. And um, the first question they're asking is um, related to, do I need any uh, special equipment beside a mat or anything else to do with stretches? No, no, no. Just the firm surface, the floor, it's fine. I would invite you to have a mat, but if you don't have a mat, even a towel will work for you to do your stretching. And sometimes you can even stretch while you're standing. So um, <laughs> another question. Well, I'm pretty sure the person that asked, yeah, it definitely was happy with that answer. Um, we have mm -hmm. another question is like, uh, how do I um, stop my thoughts uh, when I'm trying to meditate or in other words I guess the um, person is asking how to stop like a wandering around in my mind when I'm trying to focus and meditate okay that is an excellent question and you have to remember that we're all human beings uh, most of the time like within one hour I I probably have more than 10 thoughts within an hour right and that it's very normal when you are starting meditation, you want to make sure that you acknowledge the thought and then let go. So the best way for me to describe it is think of it as a movie. Acknowledge your thought and let go. It is totally normal when you first get started um, meditating. So it's just practice, practice, practice. And uh, for example, I, I would ask you not to start with an hour or 30 minutes a day start maybe meditating two minutes a day because at first it can be quite difficult okay and Anything we have else? what we have one more and um the question was like um if i'm going through difficult times in my life and mm -hmm. i have a lot of problems like we all do mm -hmm. how do i start meditation you know how do i start okay. concentrating so this is uh the area where i was talking about mindfulness because we all have problems and I know that many times some of us obsess about that issue that we have, right? So what I would invite you to do is maybe just take the time to bring your awareness, again, mindfulness. It can be breathing, it can be you eating. That would be a way for you to start, um, I don't wanna say ignoring, but maybe just being present in the moment, okay? Well, we, we all can use these steps, especially now that we are at home and we are definitely doing many different things that we are not used to um, as a right. mom. And, you know, we all probably have other uh, people in our audience. They are going through the same things. We have to keep working. We have to be a teacher. We have to keep our house astray and everything. So it, it is right. a difficult time, but probably according to your presentation, the perfect time to start with you know, be present. Right, be present in the moment and enjoy life. Yep. <laughs> well, we're gonna give you a virtual hug and um, we wanted Yay. to say thank you uh, for everything that you uh, taught us today. We are going to say bye and we'll try to invite our second presenter, Aletia. Okay. And let me just make sure I say bye to Paula as we get Take ready for, <laughs> thank you, thank you. and. Um, we have many more questions for you, uh, but we are not having a extra time. So we want to make sure that we, you know, answer the most important ones and the ones that were in the order that they appear. So um, they can okay. contact us later. Thank you. Let me just make Bye. sure that I have. Bye, Paula. Bye. <laughs>
Okay, and now we're going to try again with our second presenter, who was our first presenter. Her name is Aletia, and she will be bringing us uh, the presentation about how to clarify your goals. And I, before I put her on the presentation, let me just bring her uh, presentation ready. And um, you can start uh, or just share some of your comments. What do you think about our um, theory to action webinar so far? And what are any other questions you may have as we getting ready for Aletia and she will give us a presentation about how to clarify your goals. So I will invite Aletia to try to make sure that she, um, her connection is working and we hope that she is. Um, let's see. <laughs> Aletia, how is your connection right now? I, I hope it is better. Is it better? Can you hear me well? Perfect. I can hear you perfectly. So with this, I'm going to be on the background again and reading all your comments and your question as Aletia, uh, who I mentioned before, she is from Mexico. She is a master in um, counseling and psychology, and she is presenting to us clarifying your goals. So here's Aletia again, and you have the microphone and the camera, my friend. See you in a little bit. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for bearing with me. Uh, we had a small hiccup, but we're back. Um, uh, thank you, Claudia. Thank you, more. Thank you, GSL Network, for the space and for the lovely work that you do. Uh, as Claudia mentioned, my name is Alicia Olmedo. I'm a Mexican psychotherapist. I have a master in counseling psychology, and I work mainly with uh, clinical hypnosis, treating depression and anxiety. And I've also been working as a mental coach with professional athletes, helping them to clarify their goals um, and also teaching them how to manage stress and anxiety, teaching them strategies to cope better with them using mainly mindfulness and hypnotherapy, hypnotherapy tools. Um, so uh, we are living in extraordinary times in our society, our systems, our structure, they have been facing a new challenge that has made most of us change and adapt in different ways, coping with anxiety and stress on a daily basis. Let me tell you, it takes a lot of courage to be here in the uncertainty, in the present moment, but I do believe that this is a part of a bigger learning process. And in this not knowing, and in this crackling and crumbling of everything around us, we can find the opportunity to discover new meanings, to find new purposes, to create and clarify your goals. And maybe the purpose of this moment when we are feeling shaken, purposeless, or lost is the opportunity to find a deeper meaning, a more interconnected one. Not the purpose of our old hidden agenda, not from the old idea of what we were expected, but a new one, a new one more aligned to connection finding a meaning bigger than ourselves. Questioning our previous assumptions and facing our doubts and learning more about ourselves. So that from that awareness, we can shed light to our path to start figuring out where do we want to go from here and why discovering and rediscovering parts of ourselves. So I invite you, if you have a piece of paper and a pencil, you can start writing down these questions. And I will start asking you, what do you value in life? And there's no right or wrong answer. 
but it will start giving us compass of where we want to go and what can we do. And the next question would be, is why is that you value what you value? So question yourself, if these values are part of your family's social, religious, economical, where did you learn them? Where did you acquire them? What are, are part of your belief system? So start questioning all those things and recognize how your values have changed and evolved in time, how they have adapted. When you were little, you valued different things, I'm sure, than now. Maybe a month ago, you value different things than the one that you are valuing right now. So what has changed? What has remained? What are the lessons from the past that are going to help us for our goals in the future? So Jeff Foster, he's one of my spiritual teachers, once said that instead of thinking about disappointments, we could start creating new appointments. So ask yourself, what can I do with what I have in this moment? Instead of thinking, I'm disappointed because things aren't happening the way I thought they were going to be. So let's start reframing them and creating new appointments and plans. The next thing that I would like you to question is what are you focusing yourself on? Are you focusing on what you lack or are you focusing on your strengths? You know, it would be harder for us to start clarifying our goals if we are not certain of our abilities and strengths. In life, we don't get what we want, but what we focus. Because what you focus on shapes your responses and quality of life. If you're focusing on what you lack, you might not be as motivated to do something than if you are focused on the abilities and the strengths that you have and all the learning process and all the things that you have overcome and learned along the way and all the things that you can continue learning. So Tom Rath, he's an author of the book Strength Finders uh, from Gallup. He says that, no, we might not become whatever we want to be, but we can become a better version of ourselves. Um, and there's this story from one very famous uh, professional soccer player from Argentina. He, his name is Jorge Valdano. And he was a peer mate of Maradona, who is one of the greatest uh, football soccer football players in the world. So Valdano, uh, as a mate of Maradona, he always recognized Maradona's talent, his innate abilities that he had for foot, for playing football. So Valdano, he used to train harder. He know he didn't have the abilities or the talent, but he had many other strengths. He had many abilities. He had great. He had a growth mindset, so he will train harder, and he was one of the best also um, players from, from that generation of, of soccer players in Argentina. And what he did is that not, he didn't become the best football, football player in Argentina, but he became the best version of himself. And until today, he's a successful coach. He's a professional speaker. He's a motivator. So he took all the other strengths that he had, that he has until today, and he worked very hard for them to make them grow. And he didn't, you know, heard the, the whole idea, oh, you have to be the best soccer player. He was. He was going to be, and he became the best version of himself, enriching himself with different, you know, uh, areas that he's good at. So no, I might not become a professional singer myself, 
But if I identify my strengths and if I use them to find meaning and goals that are aligned with my values, I can learn and I can grow and achieve satisfactory goals, just like the example that I just gave you. So what do I already have that is good and I can do better? Ask yourself, what is good and you can do better? If we can identify our strengths, our abilities, and our values, it will become easier for us to create a, and walk a path towards what we want. So another question that I would like you to do to yourself, and it's very important nowadays, and it has become way more necessary, is what do we contribute to other people? What are the three main roles that you play in life? For me, for example, it is wife, it is daughter, it is therapist. And clarifying this are good reminders of why we do what we do. Instead of being inside of our heads, thinking that the world turns around us, let's reframe it and find a bigger meaning. Let's remember that we are all interconnected, that we can learn from others, and that we can also share our experiences and strengths to others. And by helping others, we are also helping ourselves. So Dr. Martin Seligman, he's the father of positive psychology in his many years of research, has identified three different types of happiness. So the first one is uh, the hedonistic one, you know, when we enjoy doing something like, I don't know, eating an ice cream, jogging, whatever, is mostly related to pleasure and enjoyment. The second one is uh, what Dr. Siskan Mihaly refers as flow, is when we do something that we like uh, and we enjoy, that we use our strengths and we are challenged and time flies. And the third one is the altruistic one. It involves or could involve the second one, but it also has a sense of interconnection with something bigger. It could be socially, it could be spiritually, but it means that it, you are not only working for yourself, but you are part of a bigger thing, aligned with something bigger. So in order for us to achieve our goals, they have to be aligned with what we value, with what makes us happy as well. So question yourself, what, what does make you happy? What do you enjoy doing? and how you can incorporate this to your goals and objectives. And as I mentioned before, there's this adding extra component is realizing that it's not just about us. How can we orient what we are doing that adds on to the life of another person? I truly believe that if we realize how much we do or we can support others, our life will be filled immediately with meaning, transforming our daily activities. And from this meaning, from this sense of strength and purpose, we can have a clearer idea of what our paths are. So question yourself. Who are those people for whom you move today? And when you have your goals, how do you tie those long goals into your daily choices? So fraction your goals. What are the small steps that are you taking today? If you want to be a good father, a good leader, athlete, you have to put your own health and well-being first. Paula was saying this, we need to sleep well, eat well, being mindful. So those small choices that you take daily are the ones that are going to make the difference in the long run. Professor Schweitzer, he's a professor in the University of Pennsylvania, he wrote a paper called Goals Gone Wild, 
um, where he mentions that goals are like a powerful medication. So you need to make sure how appropriate it is and keep monitoring your goals to determine, is it too specific? Is it too stressful? And then make the necessary adjustments. So question the goals that you already have. And goals, remember that they have to enhance our lives. And as important as our goals are, we have to remember the process of achieving them. If we do not enjoy at least some part of the journey, we won't likely achieve the goals that we are setting up. We need to enjoy part of the process. There's another author, his name is Carl Richard, and he's a financial planner as well. And he mentions, and I love it, that if we are finding it difficult to complete certain goals, we need to look hard at why those goals are even on our list in the first place. Do we really want them there? Or did we just add them because we thought that they should be on the list because our parents told us or our partners or we saw that our friend had the same goal? So we need to remember we set goals because we want to improve on who we are and how we feel about ourselves today. If we do not question ourselves and ignore what makes us happy and the influence and difference we do and we can make to others, we will be setting goals that are doomed to failure or not completion. So I would like to end this theoretical part with a phrase of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that is life's more persistent and urgent question is what are you doing for others? So let's start broadening our sights and in our hearts and see how can we contribute to the world. And just like a brief recap of this, just if you can write them down tonight, tomorrow morning, what is that you value in life? What does make you happy? What are the three main roles that, are, that you play in life? How do you contribute to other people? And from there, and noticing and realizing what are your abilities and your strengths, if you clarify as well your strengths, it will be easier for you to start having a much bigger and clearer idea of what our goals are. And I would like to finish uh, my time with a brief uh, meditation exercise, mindfulness meditation exercise, just to help us to, to get into contact with our strengths and our abilities. Um, it's just a brief hypnosis exercise. So just where you are, I would like you uh, to put yourself as comfortable as possible and just close your eyes and start noticing how are, how are you right now. Just noticing all the tingling sensations, the throbbing pulsations and start getting in contact with yourself. Noticing your breath, and just like Paula mentioned before, just going to that place of awareness, being mindful of how you are right now. And from this place, using the power of your imagination, start going to a place from your past. And I don't know if it's a moment from your, you know, long time ago or from our, your recent past. Just go to a place in your past where you felt confident, where you felt that you were able and capable of doing 
something and you made it and you learn it and you achieve it. And go to that moment where you feel confident and capable and you put your effort and you made it and notice it very vividly. You start remembering, experiencing, noticing the sounds, noticing the people around you, and how does it feel in your body, that sense of being able to do something right. Noticing in your body the sensation of, yes, I'm capable, I'm doing it. I can do it. Where do you feel the confidence in your body? And I really don't know, but you notice there. Is it in your chest? Is it in your arms, your face? And notice how the sensation of feeling good, of feeling that you know that you can, that you're able, this confidence, this happiness is expanding all over your body. And this moment you are living it again very vividly there. And notice in which part of your body feels like this, and you can put a color in it, notice the sensations, and bring the sense of capability this sense of confidence, of knowing that you can, that you're able, and bring it with you and imagine yourself in a week or so or tomorrow or from now on working and enjoying your activity, activities from this sense of knowing that you're capable of learning and growing, from this sense of confidence. And you can imagine yourself and noticing yourself, learning, growing, thriving, knowing that you're able. And whenever you feel ready, you can open your eyes and come back to the present moment, bringing with yourself this sense of confidence, of knowing that you can, that you have, and you will continue doing it. So, if you have any questions, I will be more than happy to answer them. Thank you um, so much for the space to start bringing yourself back and bringing with you the sense that you know that you're capable of doing many things and many more. And I could start reading the, oh no, there, hi. <laughs> Alessia, hi. Thank you so much. That was a extraordinary, wonderful presentation. Um, I'm pretty sure our audience definitely felt all the emotions um, that you felt while you were giving us this presentation. I wanted to thank you for that. We do have a, a, a few questions for you. So, Hope you're ready. Um, the first one is, um, if what I want doesn't what I want is what I focus on. The thing is, um, what? Ah, because I mentioned um, 
some we don't get what we want but we get what we focus um so the thing is that uh, for example i always give this example sometimes it's the way that we uh we phrase things because uh the way that we create our world is the way that we speak for instance if i say oh i don't want to get sick and we keep thinking oh i don't want to get sick I, I i want to be healthy but i just don't want to get sick i don't want to get a flu or i don't want to get a cold so we are keeping in mind what we don't want you know so that's why i'm talking about being focused on what we want so i the the correct way of saying it would be so i i want to be healthy i want to uh get better i want to eat better i, I want to eat healthier for example because the our mind our subconscious mind it doesn't know the word no so for instance if i say to all you guys at this moment do not think in a pink gorilla please guys do not think in a pink gorilla you are all thinking mostly of all of you thinking in a pink gorilla because we we the, our mind doesn't have the word no so we need to put the thing and then like cross it but at the same time we're watching the thing so we need to it's not that we don't focus on what we lack but it's it's the way how we phrase it or how we approach to it is i know that i'm not a perfect singer but i know that i want to keep practicing and i want to become better so it's just the same thing just said in a different way awesome thank you for that answer and um we have another one this is this is like a two-part questions uh somebody in our audience says as you mentioned during the presentation to set our goals we also have to enjoy our journey and if i'm not enjoying my journey as i'm setting my goals is that okay too so the question is like if i'm not enjoying what i'm putting myself to is that okay uh, uh the thing is that we are not going to enjoy all of the parts of the journey like it's not that we are like Heidi you know walking down the mountain like throwing flowers all day <laughs> of course it isn't it's um but at least that we enjoy some parts of it it's it's like when we go to we all went to uh, elementary school or 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 high school or college when we go to college we don't we do not enjoy all of the topics or the you know the classes that we take but we have a goal in mind you know our goal is our our title you know we we are grad papers or whatever so in order to endure the classes that we don't like we have to have our goal you know and to bring to life what are the things that we are enjoying from the whole process because there are some things that we are enjoying there is a brief example that it that it, it comes to it that um that it's not mine it's deepak Chopra actually says this uh story that he went once to uh to nepal to a monastery uh to make a meditation retreat and he was like dressed all just like the monks and he had to go to the town every day because all these monks were beggars and they didn't wear wear shoes so they were like in their bare feet and they had to walk from the monastery all the way down to the town to beg for food every day but they had to go like very centered meditating all the way down and up so he was suffering he was suffer he wanted his goal was you know to be more enlightened to be meditating to you know to be more with himself but he was suffer suffering from going down and back without shoes and and he saw that the other monks were in suffering as much as he was like they were very concentrated they were very mindful in silence walking uh so he asked uh the the main monk i don't know how they call like the director or something i guess he asked him like why is it that i i feel the pain you know every time i walk and i see you guys you are very composed you're very calm you're very you know uh, mindful of the of the walking process and he says it's because you're focusing on the wrong thing 
every time you focus, you put your attention on when your feet touches the ground. So you feel the pain. It's like, ow, you know, one stone, oh, another pebble, you know. So he was focusing on the moment of pressing down. And what the main monk said to him is that I've put my attention and my focus on the relief that my feet feel when they are up, not in the ground. So the, oh, my feet is relaxing. And you know what I mean? So it's part of the same journey. It's just what we are focus, focusing on is something different. So sometimes... I we are not going to <laughs> to enjoy all of the parts of the process. And that's also a, a, a part of GRID that it's called G-R-I-D. You know, that when we have GRID is um, that we have that endurance that we know that something we are not enjoying, but we have our goals very clear. So we are still uh, doing something when we are feeling challenged. And we have to acknowledge the small steps that we have that, oh yeah, I'm learning this. Oh, I learned this today. You know, professional athletes happen all the time that they're not enjoying, you know, the their training, but they're if they focus on the, the small achievements that they have daily, it's easier for them. To so you're saying, in other words, you're saying that it's small goals also help you to get to your uh, larger goal in this case. Yes. Yes. Okay. And, and this is going to be with the last question of the, you know, because we kind of are running out of time, but this is, a, I think, a very important question. Doesn't matter how old you are uh, and it, it happened to all of us. So what if they say, I still don't know what I want to be? And I, I, I think this is ageless. This can happen at any time in your life. You know, as you are a high schooler, you're in college, you are, you know, a professional person and then realize that you still don't know what you want to be. So that is, I think, a, a one of the good questions from our audience today. And I want to just to uh, say goodbye before, um, you know, you answer that question and we will have a few minutes for a survey. So what if I don't know what I want to be? Uh, what if I think it is okay and just be uh, learn to be in the uncertainty in a way and keep nourishing yourself. Uh, I'm sure many of us are still, until now we don't know or for many years we didn't know what we wanted to be or what did we want it to go. But trust the process is just keep learning and nourishing yourself with different things that you like. Like that's why, why it is important to know what you value and what makes you happy. Because if you can identify those things and you keep nourishing yourself, it doesn't matter if you don't have like a clear idea of where do you want to go, but you keep nourishing from different aspects. You know, it's, it's like when you have a plant and you put a seed on it, you know, from, for a flower or, or a tree, you don't know how this tree is going to be really, but you have to be patient and you keep, you know, nourishing and putting water and adding soil and moving the soil and, you know, giving the proper treatment for the plant to grow and this time. And, and we don't know if it's going to have like pink flowers or white or whatever, but enjoy the process of nourishing. So be patient as well with ourselves. And, and I'm sure life, will will show you uh sometimes it shows us um um where where do we need to be like you know it's stay with the question what do i want stay just with the question don't look for an answer in your daily meditations if you do them i would invite you just to stay there because that's the thing that with the conscious mind, we try to rush to things. We want to know the answer like immediately. What do I want? What, you know? And sometimes we need to stay with the question a little bit longer and keep nourishing ourselves. And it will settle down. And that's it. Aletia, thank you so much again uh, for your presentation. We want to thank Paula for, um, you know, giving us the first presentation. And I think everything worked out well to have you at the end and Paula at the beginning. They think they're connected. and. We were happy to have you. As we say bye to, I'm sorry, as we say bye to Aletia, um, we wanted to um, invite you, all our audience, to make sure that we uh, fill up the questionnaire. Um, it's important for us uh, as an organization 
to make sure that we share with you also, um, you know, uh, some of our feedback and we learn from how do you enjoy this one and what kind of other, what kind of other webinars we can put together. I'm also sharing on the chat um, before I um, go, I'm sharing on the uh, chat the part about how to follow us if you speak Spanish, if you uh, wanted to follow more Latin America, you can follow that link that is in the bottom and uh, we will be able to um, give you or keep you inspired to do other things in your life. So as I said before, I would like to invite you now to do a survey live and um, I will share with you the survey. As we get in close to our end, we wanted to thank you from the bottom of our heart, uh, the time that you put into listening to these two presenters today, to listen to our presentation about GSL Network. Uh, and I'm happy and very proud to be part of uh, these two wonderful organizations. And uh, we are here to help with anything that you need. So follow us on gslnetwork.com or more Latin America. I'm going to share the survey and please bear with me. We will be probably taking uh, around five to seven minutes to fill up this. And um, you are ready receiving right now this survey for you guys to fill it out. If you have uh, any questions, we'd be happy to share with you. But again, we wanted to say thank you to More Latin America and thank you for ESL for making possible this webinar today. Our um, thanks also to Michaela Walsh, our founder and member, and she did have a goal and she wanted to empower young leaders around the world. And we are here as a result of that. So thank you, Michaela, for all you mentoring and empowering. And thank you for all the leaders that are members of GSL at this particular moment. Uh, around the world, we are happy and blessed to be part of this wonderful network. Also to the more Latin America, uh, we wanted to say thank you to you guys because you are making uh, a dream possible about getting to many people and share our knowledge. So thanks a lot for that.